First, a question. What generates enough heat to keep a six-room house comfortable in sub-zero temperatures? But isn't the furnace? It's a water-cooled engine in a car or light truck, and more than 140 million of them travel America's roads and streets every working day. Engine combustion temperature measures between 1,200 and 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. This engine uses about one-third of that heat to move the pistons and the vehicle. Another one-third escapes through the exhaust system, leaving the final third for the cooling system to get rid of. A healthy cooling system protects engines, makes them more efficient, because coolant temperature affects the fuel mixture in vehicles with onboard computers. Now, most of us know cooling systems inside and out, but let's review some of the fundamentals anyway. Watch the monitor. This simplified drawing shows the major parts of a cooling system. The water pump is its heart, circulating coolant continuously through the engine block, heads, and radiator. The thermostat regulates the engine's normal temperature by routing coolant to the radiator or recirculating it through the engine block. Since coolant temperatures often exceed the sea level boiling point of 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees centigrade, the coolant would boil over frequently if the system weren't pressurized. For each pound of pressure, the coolant boiling point goes up 3 degrees, so 15 pounds of pressure increases the boiling point 45 degrees. Now the system can operate at 257 degrees without boiling over. A spring-loaded relief valve in the radiator cap opens if the pressure exceeds the cooling system's design limit. Inside the radiator, coolant flows through a series of tubes separated by metal fins. As the air flows between the fins and tubes, it removes heat from the coolant. The radiator fan pulls through enough air for proper cooling when the vehicle is idling or moving slowly. This is the business end of a water pump the impeller that pumps coolant through the system. Now you'll see many different kinds because each impeller is designed for specific needs. It's attached to a shaft which supports a big load put on it by the cooling fan and the popular power accessories. This shaft and bearing assembly is extremely important because it absorbs heavy loads from different directions at the same time. The fan hub anchored at the end of the shaft provides an attachment plate for the belt pulley and the cooling fan. Now, for vehicles without air conditioning, a four-bladed fan weighing only, oh, two pounds or so pulls air through the radiator. Now, some cars use a flexible fan with blades that flatten out at high speeds to reduce engine load and fan noise. But most air-conditioned cars use a fan blade and clutch assembly that weighs, oh, seven to 12 pounds. The fan clutch reduces fan speed when enough ram air is passing through the radiator and fan cooling isn't needed. A fan clutch conserves power, saves fuel, reduces fan noise. 